Good morning. I will be your moderator for today is Wednesday, December the 9th, 2022. And welcome. Excuse me. You have been muted. Please continue to monitor your mute and video buttons during class. Welcome to the Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international honest hearted truth seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church and neither are we affiliated with any religious organizations. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kelly in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. This school was incorporated in the state of California in the year of 1958. Classes are held in Canada, United States, Bahama, Jamaica, England, Ghana, Zambia, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. The host is Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, and the original name and title of the Heavenly Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. This has been improperly substituted with Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. This has been improperly substituted with God. The name of the Holy Spirit, whether manifest in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. As the apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5, that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but I'm, Unlike Lord and God, Elohim is the title that our creator, Yahweh, chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in any good dictionary or encyclopedia will show proof that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any letter or character in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in our English alphabet until some 1600 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true and original name of our father and his son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Now Yahweh is pure spirit. And in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart, on this Moses chart, as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself, 
because a, pl a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We've drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you how that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pre-spirit state of Yahweh. Now Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pre-spirit state took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifests himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world erroneously calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation and we must know that name. So a simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Yahweh, Yahshua, and title Elohim may be had by reading the preference of a holy name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel up out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him this divine tabernacle pattern in a vision. He later on instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. Now this pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. Three compartments making up the one tabernacle pattern. We also go about in this school to show proof how that everything in the universe is made and operate according to the structure and function of this threefold divine tabernacle pattern and how that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. We have 10 primary aims or objectives of this school and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Two is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Three, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Four, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticisms, and ignorance. Six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demon operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Nine is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained 
There is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And 10 is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is to speak the truth. Today, we'd like to begin this class uh, with the opening prayer by uh, Dr. Lila Morris. Our scripture lesson is Daniel, the ninth chapter, King James Version, read by Dr. Deborah Hanna. Our readers for today are, are Dr. Lucy Altman and Dr. Edna Mixon. And Jackie McCain and I myself will be rendering a song. Uh, Dr. Morris. Good morning, brethren. May we all bow our, our hearts and minds. Dear Yahweh, through your son, Yahshua the Messiah, thank you for allowing us this, to delight in your knowledge. Thank you for allowing us to learn more about you. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. And we could be anywhere else, but thank you for letting us be here. Please give us a divine understanding that we may glorify your name. And please let the vessels be obedient that we may grow in your knowledge of you. All praises and glory unto you. Thank you for your many blessings you have given us. I pray in the name of Yahshua, our Savior, our only hope of glory. May we all say hallelujah. 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 Let's continue that praise with the sun. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. To Yah be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise Yahweh, praise Yahweh, let the earth hear his voice. Praise Yahweh, praise Yahweh, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Yahshua the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Oh, per redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of Yah, the vileless offender who truly believes that moment from Yahshua a pardon received. Praise away, praise away, let the earth hear his voice. Praise Yahweh, praise Yahweh, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Yahshua the Son and give him the glory. Great things he hath done, great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done, and great our rejoicing through Yahshua the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our Savior, Yahshua will be. Praise Yahweh, praise Yahweh, let the earth hear his voice. Praise Yahweh, praise Yahweh, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Yahshua the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. <clears throat> Good morning. Good 
Good morning. Today's scripture is Daniel, the ninth chapter. I'll be reading from the King James Version, inserting the true name. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years, whereof the number of the years, whereof the word of Yahweh came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto Yahweh Elohim to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto Yahweh my Elohim and made my confession and said, O Yahweh, the great and dreadful Elohim, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy, thy, thy precept and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O Yahweh, righteous belongeth unto thee but unto us confusion of faces, as at this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and, and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries whither thou hast driven them because of their trespass, that they have trespassed against thee. O Yahweh, to us belongeth confusion of faith to our kings, to our prince, to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. To Yahweh our Elohim belong mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of Yahweh our Elohim to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yea, all Israel has transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of Elohim, because we have sinned against him. And he hath confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven have not been done as have been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us. Yet may we not our prayer before Yahweh our Elohim, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand the truth, thy truth. Therefore, hath Yahweh washed upon the evil and brought it upon us. For Yahweh our Elohim is righteous in all his works, which he doeth, for we obey not his voice. And now Yahweh our Elohim has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and has gotten thee renowned as at this day we have sinned, we have done wickedly. O Yahweh, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city, Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now, therefore, our Elohim, Hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplication, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for Yahweh's sake. 
and Elohim, incline thy ear, and hear, open thine eyes, and behold our desolation and the city which is called by thy name, for we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, but thy, for thy great mercies. O Yahweh, hear. O Yahweh, forgive. O Yahweh, hearken and do. Defer not for thy own sakes, O my Elohim, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplications before Yahweh my Elohim for the holy mountain of my Elohim. Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me, and talked with me and said, O oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplication, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most, ho the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous time. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood and unto the end of the war, desolations are determined and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease and for the overspreading of abomination he shall make it desolate even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate that was daniel the ninth chapter king james version Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 We thank everyone for their participation. Um, and I would now turn this class over to our host, Dr. Lenore Allen. Good morning, everyone. I was glad that everybody was able to assemble today. And we I had Daniel the ninth chapter read um, today because in this transcript, Dr. T Kinley talks about the desolations that were mentioned in the book of Daniel. And uh, if we want to take, I just want, I just found this and I'm so glad that we had this. Uh, if you look at pattern of the universe, that's the Lan uh, Lansing class, Wednesday, December 11th, 2019, on YouTube. That's Wednesday, December 11th, 2019. If anybody wants to write it down, that was what, what the lecture was about, about the 70 weeks. And then also December, Sunday, December 8th, 2019, 70 weeks, Daniel. So I'll just say that again so you can write it down. Go ahead, get your pencil. There it is. It's under the couch. Okay. Wednesday, December 11th, 2019. And it's entitled 70 weeks. And then Sunday, December 8th, 2019, 70 weeks, Daniel. And I apologize because we've done it here, but I didn't mark it clear enough so that I could find it. But anyway, 
he talks about if anybody wants to if we just want to look at it a little bit daniel is praying and he admits that they have sinned that they are wrong they were sent to, into captivity. what time is it i'm sorry what time is it no 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 these are classes that are on youtube they're already done oh. 2019. oh 2019 okay i'm sorry yeah so yeah these are classes where um the preacher the teacher gets into um daniel and all those numbers so anyway this whole scripture reading is about that the people have sinned and because they have sinned and gone against the ways of Yahweh, Yahweh has put them into captivity and he told them you're going to be there for 70 years. And he said, uh, you know, don't be trying, you know, don't be trying to get out. You're going to be there for a while, you know, um, settle down. This is where you're going to be. So um, they're praying and he's admitting we have sinned or we have committed iniquity and we have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from the priests from thy precepts and from thy judgment. So they weren't treated harshly by their creator. They were corrected. He does have the power to correct and he will correct you. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, our fathers, and to all the people of the land. So they had been warned. O Yahweh, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of face. So he says, um, he's praying and he's asking for help. <coughs> and and then um, and then he while he was yet speaking. Um, Gabriel was telling him that whom I've seen in the vision of the game being caused to fly swiftly touched me from the time of the even oblation and he informed me and he talked with me and said oh Daniel I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding like your prayer is being heard and and you're and you're going to understand and the beginning of thy supplications the commandment came forth and I am come to show thee for thou art greatly beloved therefore understand the matter and consider the vision and then he talks about that there's going to be 70 weeks of the determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to finish the transgression to make an end of sins to make reconciliation for an iniquity to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy that that is beautiful i cannot speak about it as perfectly as it should be done but that's what the whole 70 weeks was for that yashua was going to come in he was going to fulfill the law and the prophets he was the one that gave the law through Joshua the son of Nun, he's gonna come in to fulfill it. He is the author and he is the finisher. And then you're not gonna to have to be desolate anymore because he's gonna pour out the Holy Spirit in you. And um, does anybody else have, I don't wanna take a lot of time, but does anybody else have anything else to say about that? Thank you. Okay, so then we can go to the um, transcript, which is called Tide of Repetition, Sunrise, Sunset. So we're going to start reading it. I can start off. Tired of repetition, sunrise, sunset. Um, lecture given by Dr. Kinley on December 18th, 1974 at the Baker's Union Hall in Los Angeles, California. Beginning statements missing, Dr. Kinley. In such a way that you can understand it, but there's always gonna be misunderstandings. Now, what we have tried to get over to you here right recently is that you're living in the end of this probationary period now. If you have any intentions at all of being saved, you must go where the truth is taught. See, 
Now you just can't do your way about it. Now you just can't do your way about it. You have to do Yahweh's way. And if not, then you're just going to be lost. Now that's plain, simple, and easy to be understood language. Now, we have in these last prophetic seconds in this probationary period, you notice I didn't say age. All kinds of erroneous teachings, some outstanding ignorance and superstitions and traditions and customs. All, it, all of it derived from those satanic spirits that were in heaven and was cast out to the earth that were in heaven and was cast out to the earth. Now, you're being warned all the time about it. And they are responsible for the erroneous teaching that's going on. They were created for that purpose. They were ordained, so says Jude, for that purpose. Yahweh made them that way. There is no conversion form. Now, and I guess you understand that. Now, it behooves you, since you are living and breathing and walking around with this right mind and all those kind of things, to kind of look around and find out some things for sure. Now, you can tell that, the, that this Bible is not understood. Now, here's how you can tell it. You see, first of all, it's because there is so many secular denominations disagreeing with one another, right? Right. right. And since that is true, then you know there's something wrong. Them people can put their hand on, them people can put their hand on their finger right on a passage in the Bible and read. Now, it's not our contentions down here that the people can't read. But suppose you look at Matthews 24, 15. Now, I didn't say this. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Now, do you understand that? Now, when you therefore see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. It didn't say set down. Now, I like to make this clear too. See in the holy place here, you had the golden candlestick, the table of showbread, and the altar of, golden altar of incense. There is no seat in there for nobody to sit on. The throne is in the most holy place. That's mm -hmm. where the seat is. So you stand up in here. Now that will be co correlated with the, the wilderness here. You understand? Now they were on a journey to Canaan's land. See, on the move. They could have made that trip from Egypt to back into Canaan's land in 40 days. But for their disobedience, it took 40 years. One day for a year. That's prophetic time. Now, if they were going to make it in 40 days, 6,300, 550 people, that's a great multitude. Why? Then why, then they wouldn't have no time to be loafing around and sitting around. You understand? They have a leader too. And you'd be surprised that here this year, Ambassador College up there in Pasadena, Armstrong, Ted Gardner Armstrong and his father had a $52 million a year income. And Ted Gardner said this year that neither his father or he knew that Jesus was back here with Moses. He didn't know that. And he read around in the Bible and pick up verses and chapters to prove that he was back there. Now, 
Did you know where he got it from? Um, yeah. Okay, do, do you want to say anything, Frank? Good morning. <laughs> well, you know, I'm sorry. I forgot. I'm sorry. No, to everything's you. fine. Everything's fine. Um, the first paragraph, um, you know, he talks about uh, uh, there's always going to be misunderstandings. <laughs> and uh, and he said, uh, we try to get over to you here right recently that you're living in the end of this probationary period. And he repeated that later on down. But he says, now, if you have any intentions at all of being saved, you must go where the truth is taught. See, uh, now you just can't do your way about it. Mm -hmm. You have to do Yahweh's way. And if not, then you're just gonna, going to be lost. Now, that's plain, simple, and easy and to be understood language. So, see, this teaching is the way Yahweh, uh, Yahweh gave uh, uh, Henry Clifford Kinley this divine vision and revelation. And he instructed him to do the things that are done. And you can tell that it just no man could have put all this together. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. Uh, it would have to be the Holy Spirit. Plus, Yahweh always, at the end of every age, uh, uh, sends someone to close out the age. And, um, and he was the one given the Holy Spirit and the task to teach the whole world about the errors that they have. So you, you can't go your way. Now, Yahshua said, you could read that in Matthew. I mean, um, uh, where is it? Uh, John 14 and 6. He said, you have to go Yahweh's way. Well, what is Yahweh's way? Uh, uh, well, you, oh boy. John 14 and 6 says, Yahshua said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Yeah. So Yahshua says, I am the way the truth and the life no man coming to the father but by me why because he's the only one that come from the father and righteousness so that's the only way to go back mm -hmm. and when you go back to uh uh well read x get the moses chart read exodus 23 20 exodus 23 and 20 Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. So you see, he said he's going to keep an angel in the way. You see, uh, 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 behold, I send an angel to keep you in the way. And, 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 and you have to obey him and obey his voice for he will not pardon your transgression. And you see an angel in the cloud there. And it might even have Exodus 23, 20 there. But anyway, uh, at Yahshua, he says, for my name is in him. See, Yahshua is the way to get back to Yahweh. And so, uh, uh, and it says, my name is in him. So you see that you got Yahweh and Yahshua. Okay, um, hmm. um, you might as well get Jeremiah. Well, read Isaiah uh, 35 and 8. Isaiah 35 and 8 says, And an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the way far in men, though unacquainted, shall not err therein. Yeah, that's probably holy name, isn't it? Oh, 30, you want a 35? No, 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 it's all right. Oh, it, I was it, right, it, okay. It, it'll yes, it is. Fool, it, yeah, it will say a fool shall not therein. So he don't like the word fool, so he puts unacquainted. 
<laughs> so it says a highway shall be there and a way and it shall be called the way of holiness and it's an unclean can't pass over you have to have that uh, like he said you that has to be cast out uh, and it shall be for the wayfaring man it says though fools shall not err therein you can't you can't miss out if you listen to the way that he does it uh yes, this, he's this the way there. the truth and the life yes uh, it says and a and this the king james version and an highway shall be there and a way and it shall be called the way of holiness the unclean shall not pass over it but it shall be for those the wayfaring men, the fools, shall not err therein. Thank you. And when you go to Isaiah 57 and 15, uh, and that's what he usually has written up there when you have Yahweh's spirit on the cloud. That's one. And it's also what's written on the front cover of the Elohim book. Uh, it says, for thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place. Uh, with him also there is a contrite and a humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. So it says he's the high and lofty one. So when it talks about the highway, he's the high and lofty one, and then he's got Yahshua Messiah being the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me and that highway is that pattern and 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 how that you see the gospel being preached the death the burial the resurrection and ascension uh and and through the witnesses of the blood the water and the spirit and 40 and those things being repeated and over you just don't get no higher teaching of that and preaching in the true name of yahweh el and yahshua through the law the prophets and the fulfillment and show it through the ages and dispensations. That, that's there's no higher way than this way this teaching is taught to us uh, by this divine vision revelation through the Holy Spirit, which is Yahshua the Messiah. Uh, you also have uh, John, uh, well, uh, Jeremiah um, six and sixteen, or six sixteen and six. One of them, maybe. <laughs> Hold on. 6 and 16 says, it says, thus said Yahweh, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths, where is the good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. So you see how it says uh, uh, the way, the good way and walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. See, and then that's this teaching. He said, you have to go Yahweh's way. You can't do it your way. Because you know your way is really Proverbs 14 and 12. There's a way that seemeth right to a man, but the ways thereof are the ways of death. And that's also the same thing it says in 1625. Uh, that uh, there's a way that seemeth right. And so everybody's got a way they think seems right, yep. but uh, it's not the correct way. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he also, the next paragraph, he talked about the satanic spirits, how they were ordained of old. Well, he says that in Jude. Uh, yeah, you might as well read that because uh, that was the next thing he talked about was um, now we have in these last prophetic seconds of this probationary period, he said, you notice I didn't say age. <laughs> We're in a probationary period. Mm -hmm. uh, because he said the age ended uh, in 1960. But uh, Yahweh's in his long suffering, not willing that any should perish. And he said, there's all kinds of erroneous teachings, some outstanding ignorance and superstitions and traditions and customs. Have you seen any outstanding ignorance out here? Oh yeah. <laughs> it could have been in, it could have been in us, right? <laughs> oh, there yeah. you go. Oh, yeah. You understand? Uh, mm -hmm. He called it outstanding ignorance. And <laughs> superstitions, traditions, and customs. All of it derived from those satanic spirits that were 
in heaven and was cast out to the earth. Mm -hmm. So you can read about demons being cast out, but you, it, you, you, you can't detect them until the Holy Spirit teaches you the truth. He's the one that can uncover that satanic spirit and what they teach. Mm -hmm. uh, and he says, now you're, now you're being warned all the time about it and they are responsible for the erroneous teaching that's going on. See, it's not people, it's those demons that's lying to people. See, angels are ministering spirits. And when they were cast out of heaven, they were demoted to demons. But they are still, that's why there's so many in the ministry. And that's why that they, uh, and whatever doctrine you have, as many demons as was cast out, that's how many doctrines you have, mm -hmm. which is innumerable. You can't count them all. Yeah. Uh, uh, read Second Peter 2 and 1. Did you want to drink? Yeah, read that. Jude 3, beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the sons. See, that's that third aim of ours. I mean, the eighth aim, <laughs> but it's the third verse in Jude. Uh, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. Uh, he was very careful how he wrote. It was needful for me to write unto you. It's needful for him to tell them the things he's going to tell them and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the sons. Now, see, it's the, Ro I think he's going to talk about that too. As the Roman Catholic Church had put them saints in there. Mm -hmm. Or it could have been another lecture. I would agree. But anyway, go ahead and read the next part. Because he was saying they were ordained, so says Jude. Well, that's this next verse here. Verse 4, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our Elohim into lasciviousness and denying the only Yahweh Elohim and our Savior, Yahshua, the Messiah. And that's what he's talking about. Them certain, them certain men crept in unawares are demons that have gotten into bodies. Okay? Uh, uh, so there are certain men crept in unawares. Those demons, they, they creep in there and you don't know that they're over there deceiving you. Who were before of old ordained to this condemnation unrighteous men uh, uh, turning the grace of our savior into lasciviousness they they turn the grace into foolishness it isn't it foolishness to have pray to mary or to think that you're eating uh uh, uh well you and know what, uh, yeah grape juice and crackers is going to give you salvation you understand um, just all the things that are taught, you know, and denying the own, and it's, and it's also, they turn the grace into, you got to believe, well, whatever false doctrine they teach, and denying the only Yahweh Elohim and our Savior, Yahshua Messiah. Now, that's what their job is, to have you worship something other than the Creator and the Savior. Believe something else. And that's also, now, when you read Jude, Second Peter, the second chapter, says the same thing, but different words. It don't say earnestly contend there, but it does mean, it does point out them satanic spirits and what they're, you know, what they're doing. So read Second uh, Peter 2 and 1. Second Peter 2 and 1. Go ahead, Doc. No, no, you're good. You're going right ahead. Thank you. But there were false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying Yahweh that brought them, that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Now you see, he said there were false prophets. See, back there before the Holy Spirit was poured out, there was false prophets also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you. Now he's bringing it up to date. After the Holy Spirit's poured out, he said there's going to be false teachers among you. 
So you see how back there, ain't that the same thing that happened? We know that happened uh, in the school. Mm -hmm. You understand? There's false teachers uh, uh, among you who privately, and they sometimes not privately, they publicly do it, but who privately bring in damnable heresies. What a heresy is, is erroneous doctrine. And uh, that's what we say. We're not against people. We're against the false doctrine. Right. See? Uh, I, don't, I was reading from the thing there. Uh, uh, damnable heresies. Even denying Yahshua that brought them and bringing upon themselves swift, swift destruction. Read on. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Now you see, they're gonna, many is gonna follow their pernicious ways. That's why there's many believe in false doctrine. But it says by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And then it goes on and talks about more and more about it. Uh, we, you know, uh, but uh, uh, so he's talking about those demons out there and how that they're out there. Um, well, uh, and then at the end of that second paragraph, he says, you see, first of all, is because there's so many secular denominations disagreeing with each other. Don't they disagree with each other? If they agreed with each other, would uh, there wouldn't be no problem, would it? And there wouldn't be so many different parts of Christianity. Why, why would you have to have a Baptist and a Catholic and a Methodist and a, and a Episcopalian and a Presbyterian and a, you know, there's so many different uh, Seventh-day Adventists, Jehovah Witness, Mormons. I mean, uh, it's really gotten really bad out here, ain't it? And, and who, who's right? That's none of them. But uh, if you come down to this school, you'll find out that there is there is one truth. That's uh, right. Uh, uh, I mean, he did have a true. He said he had a vision revelation from the creator. Don't believe me, but make me prove it. Get the tabernacle pattern just for a moment, just to show that one thing and get uh, Matthew 7, 13. Because when we talk about the way, see, uh, uh Read uh, that little part. Uh, read 7.13. Matthew 7 and the 13th verse says, Enter ye in by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. So see, Wide is the gate that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go in there. There was many sacrifices going there. There's many, there's eight billion people in the world right now. See, so everybody's coming to the world, and that's just the same as you entering in through this pattern, see. And uh, the high priest would enter into the pattern and have to kill these sacrifices for all the sin of the children of Israel, see. Uh, and that was a daily sacrifice or atonement made. Okay, and wide is the gate that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go in there. If you didn't have a pattern, you wouldn't know what he was talking about. Read on. Okay, the 16th verse. Ye shall know them by their fruits. No, 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 no. It would be the 14th verse, probably. 14th verse? Okay. Because small is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and... Few there be that find it. So it says, narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So you see, many go into destruction. There's many false doctrines out there, but there's but there's only one way of getting into the door, and it's three feet wide. And you know, if you go through a three foot wide, you can't you can't somebody can't go in there with you. You have to go in yourself. You understand? <laughs> well, you know, three foot. You can't get two people go in a three foot door. It's kind of showing that you have to go in through Yahshua. That's the only way. And so the only way you can get into the holy place. And so again, the gate is 30 feet wide 
and the door of the fourth step to go into the holy place, that is three feet wide. So when you add them up, you get 33. So Yahshua Messiah, when he dies, buries, and resurrects at 33, he's, he's bringing that way into the holy place. It's through his death, burial, resurrection, and through the gospel of Yahshua. Or for the witnesses of blood, water, spirit. That's how you get into the holy place. And Dr. Kinley was talking about that. That when, because uh, he had Matthew 24, 15 read. And it says, when you therefore shall see the abomination. Now, see, 23, 14 says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Well, uh, the gospel is the death, burial, resurrection. Then it says, when you therefore shall see, the 15th verse, 24, 15, which he had read, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Understand what? Where the holy place is at. And what it is. Mm -hmm. And the only way you could get into the holy place is through the door. See? And Yahshua the Messiah said in John 10 and 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and shall find good pasture. And the door is the fourth step and the Holy Spirit's what's poured out in the fourth age that we live in. See, just like the high priest was anointed at the door, which is the fourth step. Everything has a meaning to it. See, and then when you go in there, he says, he says, now, when you go in there, there ain't no place to sit down. So you just don't sit down now. He said, mm -hmm. you're on the move. Because what you're doing is you're moving on into perfection. And he said, just like the children of Israel, there was 603,550. And they, and if it was a 40-day journey into Canaan's land, he said they was on the move. And, and then he showed how that the holy place has a uh, lamb, the golden candlestick, which is the lamb stand, uh, uh, the, set, the table of shoe bread and the altar of golden incense there is no seat in there for nobody to sit on the throne is in the most holy place see that's where you sit down at and so he correlated with the wilderness you know and how that the children of israel were uh uh you know moving on uh in their migratory pattern and in, in the migration to the promised land see excuse me i just want to ask the question but nobody was supposed to sit on that throne right yeah right but but it, but yeah it was a it was a place of rest i can understand that yeah and when you read and and read uh revelation 3 and 20 and keep the chart there because 3 and 20 or 3 and 19 is it's the seventh assembly he's writing to so you see the seven step? If you didn't know, you didn't have a pattern, you wouldn't know what he was talking about there. See, and then you see across the uh, most holy places like into our head region, right? And so, so uh, Revelation 3 and 19. 3 and 19 says, as many as I love, I rebuke and test them. Be jealous, therefore, and repent. Be zealous. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. And repent. So he says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chastise. So you see where he's rebuking and chastising is in your head region because you're wrong. And he's trying to make you right. You understand? Uh, and, That's and, and he's, rebuke and chastising. And that yeah, brings, that brings yeah. you rest. That yeah, then the next verse. See. Behold. I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. So you see that? This is the seventh assembly. And it's showing that when he preaches the gospel to you, he's knocking at your door, knocking at your heart and mind there. Mm -hmm. See, he said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come into him. See how he can enter into your heart and mind. Then he'll be the one sitting on the throne. 
See, I'll come into him and sup with him and he with me. Read on. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcome and am set down with my father in his throne. Yeah, so you see that where he talks about the throne there in the seventh yeah. assembly? Sit with your father, okay. Yeah, there it is. And he see? that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the assemblies. Okay. Um, so, so like he said there, uh, the throne back in the transcript, he said the throne is in the most holy place. That's where the seat is. So you stand up in here. That's the holy place. See? Okay. Um, then he talks about uh, Ted Garner Armstrong. You know, he got 52 million years, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, Carlton Gordon in Jamaica, mm -hmm. he was in the worldwide church of God. He, he got into it in England, I think, and he even brought it to Jamaica and even had his children go to the Ambassador College, I believe. The same wow. thing he's talking about there. Uh, anyway, uh, and then you hear about, oh, is that where we stopped off at? And the next one's uh, Reverend Sung Mwan Moon, Sung Young Moon. Uh, he claims to have a vision, a revelation. Uh, uh, but he knows that uh, it can't be somebody well and they're not teaching the same thing you understand in other words if you have a vision revelation you're going to teach the same thing didn't the, did the prophets disagree with each other no no the law and the prophets were were inspired by the holy spirit and they spake the same thing and that's why you can use them to see the consistency of, of the Holy Spirit. And then when Yahshua Messiah comes to fulfill them, he can't speak nothing no different. And neither did the guys that wrote, like Paul and all them. All the way down, the whole book is like a consistent, is, well, it's the Holy Spirit just speaking through different vessels saying the same thing. And you need, and you have to be able to put it together. And that's what Dr. Kinley's vision of revelation did. The Holy Spirit uh, gave him a vision of revelation and it just puts it all together in a nice package. And you know it's the truth. When you see something overturn and overturn, you see these charts and how, uh, well, how it's just, like he said, Yahweh's purpose is uh, uh, the Holy Spirit's working with unerring accuracy, divine authenticity, with absolute infallibility. <laughs> Did he ever hear anybody talk like that? Well, he did. Uh, Holy Spirit did. Let's read on there. Uh, now, here's a man here, Reverend Song Yan Moon from Korea. He claims to have had a vision and a revelation. I got some more literature at the house, too, about, about this. And I make it my business to see to it that I pick up all of these things and bring them down here to school and show you and show you how they make a lot of mistakes. Now, here on this side of you have, a lot of you have probably gotten some of these. He's gonna be here on the 23rd of this month. Now, this is an excerpt that was taken from one of his lectures. Now, some of you have read this, the possibilities are. Now, he hasn't said nothing, not a thing other than talk. He just talked about God, getting God back in the church and getting God back in the, uh, your home, getting God, uh, uh, see, all that kind of talk don't mean a thing don't mean nothing. God's hope for America. That's even stupid. You know, God's hope for America. He's engineering the thing. Now, why should he have a hope for America? He said he was going to do all of his pleasure. See, you follow? And the devil is no obstruction and no hindrance at all. Rather, he's an asset rather than a liability, you see? But 
now, all them kind of things, they take people's attention. See, now, I'll have to, I just simply have to do it, is to tell you about these things. I don't have no out or, or alternative for it, see. And I must show you in such a way that you can tell something about it. Now, if I can't do that, then Yahweh didn't send me. See that now? Now there's, now, there isn't anybody in this place as a uh, now, but what can't learn something about the truth? I mean, for sure, no more guess work. Now, if Yahweh hadn't have fixed it that way, then he wouldn't have been justified in sending you to the lake. Now that's simple, ain't it? Plain and simple. Now there isn't anybody. There isn't anybody in this place as of now, but what can't learn something about the truth. He said there is not, a, it's not, it, it, in other words, it's available to anyone. I mean, for sure, no more guesswork. Now, if Yahweh hadn't have fixed it that way, then he wouldn't, wouldn't have been justified in sending you to the lake. And, you know, that guy, he, that false, you know, I mean, in other words, he's pointing out the things people teach. They say, we got to get God back into the church. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he don't understand Yahweh's ever presence. Like he want, like he's going to instruct God what to do. You understand? Right. First mm -hmm. of all, he don't know his name, Yahweh. But they just run their mouth is what he was saying. He don't want to talk about God, what God's going to do. And God got a plan for America. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. He's got a plan for, he's got an eternal plan of salvation for every soul that he's got living on the earth plate. And it's that they, they can only be saved through Yahshua the Messiah. You understand? And so, uh, uh, so he said, and I must show you in such a way uh, you can tell something about it. Now, if I can't do that, then Yahweh didn't send me, see? <laughs> and so he had to point out the false doctrine and show you what the truth is about it and go into the scriptures and prove that what he was saying is the truth. You understand? In other words, he got the scriptures backing him up and the creation and the human body and the tabernacle pattern. Now, what are you going to use? And, and, and we use the dictionaries even. Then what are you going to use to disprove that? You really ain't got nothing. You just got some imagination, ain't it? Uh, matter of fact, you ought to read that just for a little. Read Second uh, Corinthians uh, ten and three, and come down a little bit because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You got physical fighting out there. But there's spiritual warfare. See. Um, Second Corinthians 10 and 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yahweh to the pulling down of strongholds. And that's what it is. We're walking in the flesh, but we don't war after the flesh. We don't do physical fighting. You understand? But it's the truth being taught for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yahweh Elohim to the pulling down of strongholds. Read. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of Yahweh and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of the Messiah. And that's what, and, and I thought that was a, really uh, beautiful prayer that was prayed today uh, and and it was that it was it was going through this more or less uh, see this knowledge and understanding it'll cast down casting down those imaginations that the world teaches and everything high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Yahweh see uh, uh, the knowledge and that's what well, you know how people say, I don't need to know that. You understand? Because you want to stay ignorant. 
uh, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of the Messiah. See, uh, every thought, that takes the Holy Spirit, don't it? Okay, uh, so I just wanted to have that. Uh, that's what, that's what, when he's going against what those, you know, uh, people say, why are you down and always what the, well, that's what the Messiah did when he walked around, wasn't he? Was he going along with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and the Essenes and the Zealots? He wasn't siding with none of them, was he? No. No, because he was washed only... sepulchers full of dead men's bones. Yeah, right. <laughs> they say you shouldn't have said you shouldn't have said that about them. Why? That's the Holy Spirit in a physical body. That's the Yahweh in a physical body saying that. Mm -hmm. See, so he knows what he's talking about. And so yeah. if the Holy Spirit, uh, and, and that's what Dr. Kinley said. He said, if I'm teaching the same way as they are out there. Uh, I'm wrong. Uh, I, he's got to say something different than what they're doing. And if he can't explain the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, he said, uh, so that you can understand it, just throw me in the scrap pile with all the rest. With the rest of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's read on, please. Okay, <clears throat> now I'll have to, I just simply have to do it, is to tell you about these things. I don't have no out or alternative for it, see? And I must show you in such a way that you can tell something about it. Now, if I can't do that, then Yahweh didn't send me. See that now? Now there isn't anybody in this place as of now, but what can't learn something about the truth. I mean, for sure. Now, more guesswork. Now, if Yahweh hadn't affixed it that way, then he wouldn't have been justified in sending you to the lake. Now, the order of service on a Wednesday, we have kind of dedicated Wednesday to this one particular thing. Now, if you don't know, see, we try to give you a lecture and then give you a break to ask questions. Now, we are sure there's a lot of things that you don't know. Now, we are sure about that because Yahweh's eternal purpose is infinite or unlimited and you will be learning in the age to come. So you're not going to get over capacitated with intelligence. I can promise you that. See, now look. Oh, that's yeah. plain, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> no, so he gives, them, he gives them a break to ask questions. And I'm so always surprised sometimes when you ask people if they have questions and there ain't no questions and they're new and everything else. Maybe they don't have questions to ask. They don't know what to ask. But he says, uh, he says, now, uh, and we are sure there's a lot of things that you don't know. Now, we are sure about that. Why? Because you ain't never been taught right. Because Yahweh's eternal purpose is infinite or unlimited and you mm. will be learning in the age to come so you're not going to get over capacitated with intelligence <laughs> i can promise you that right. <laughs> somebody just raised their hand the samsung yes that's that's me uh dr allen um <laughs> Um, I, I took note of, uh, of that, and I just want to make a comment. He said that we are not going to be overly capacitated with, with knowledge. With intelligence, yeah. Intelligence. And, and, and what came to mind when that was read is that that doesn't mean that we shouldn't learn all that we can learn because he said that too 
because right. we're gonna we're gonna need it. That's that's what he said. So that's what came to my mind because you know a lot of time. Well, I should say sometimes a doc, the founder would say things and people run off with it and and take it to mean something different. So I just wanted to mention that. I think one of the, thank you. I think one of the things he's talking about too is that uh, where you'll think that you're overcapacitated with intelligence where you think you can't learn nothing no more. Hmm. And you're, that, right. and that's, a, that's a deception. You understand? Yeah. Uh, there's never going to come to a place where you know everything. There's more that you don't know than you do, even in the natural. You know how that's ignorant true. we are in the natural? But it's really nice to go to Google and find out what you don't know sometimes <laughs> about certain things. It's amazing what that thing's got with it. Yeah. But anyway, he uh, read Psalms 145 because he said Yahweh's eternal purpose is infinite or unlimited. And he, that's another thing he used to say. He used to say, uh, there's one thing you do not know anything about. And that's learning about Yahweh without a physical body. Because that's how we've learned, haven't we? And we've yep. learned while we've been in this physical body about Yahweh, Yahweh's purpose through Yahshua and the Messiah. See, uh, so read uh, one, uh, it's 147 uh, verse 5, I think. 147 verse 5. Great is our Elohim and of great power. His understanding is infinite. His understanding is infinite. Infinite means it has no limits, no end to it. See, we, we're physical. We have, you know, we have physical bodies. And so we are finite. But he gives you enough to save your soul, though. Yes. So. And so that's what matters there. So he's he so he talks about uh, he says and, and you will be learning in the in the age to come, yeah. And that's just the fifth age, yeah. You know, so that means we're gonna be learning and, and we're really be learning in ages to come. See, and so you want to get this one right so you can make it over to the next age with an immortal glorified body. Okay. You don't have to be bothered with that old devil. That's right. And that's the good point there, too, is the the next age, he's in the lake of fire, so you ain't got him to hinder you. No, uh, but in this age, you do have him to <laughs> drag you down. You understand? Yeah. But you yeah. have Yashua Messiah to lift you up. You that's understand? right. And to give you comfort and peace and joy. But that's mm -hmm. right. The next age, that's why there'll be eternal bliss and happiness and joy throughout eternity because you ain't got no devil to uh can be yeah yeah to dog you out there <laughs> like it said was it say it, well forget um the one place where he said he'd wear out the sons of the most high oh yeah yeah and uh, sure. this world will mess you up i mean well really it'll do something to you with all the stuff that's going on and so you do need some comfort and some peace. And it's that knowledge and wisdom is the stability of thy times and the strength of thy salvation. When he said it in Isaiah 33 and 6, uh, that was prophesying of the knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy times and the strength of your salvation. But now it is the stability of your time and the strength of your salvation. That was Daniel 7.25 about wearing out the sons. Yeah, it is. That's right. Okay. Uh, and he called, one time he called those carnal ordinances the abomination desolation spoken of by mm -hmm. Daniel the prophet because the devil's got you out there worshiping them physical things. See? And, and, and you have to be in the holy place or in the Holy Spirit to see the false doctrine. Mm -hmm. See? Uh, that's being taught by the satanic spirit in the world. See. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Now look, Yashin Messiah had along with him a man by the name of Judas. See, 
And he knew who it was from the very beginning that was going to betray him. Now, he had no other alternative other than to choose Judas. He had to do that. And, and Judas had to do what he done that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And Yahshua Messiah has to do what he did in order that the scriptures might be fulfilled. You see? <laughs> now, right recently, I think I should tell you about this. We've had some complaints. Not in California. Now, so I don't want you to try. I'm saying that, I'm saying that so you can blow it on out of your mind now. No, it ain't in California about teaching the same thing all the time, about the hearing the same old routine, the same old thing all the time. It come from one of our schools. That's as much as I'm gonna tell you about that. And I wanna talk about that tonight. Now, that's stupid too, to make a statement like that now. Here Yahweh say, he doesn't change. And here you want to change something up because the folks are getting tired of hearing you say the same old thing. I don't want to go, I don't want to go down to that school because all they gotta talk about is the migratory pattern or trek from Egypt to Palestine to Canaan's land, how they got down there. God made a promise to Abraham and how that first, they had to come down here and then come back up. And a lot of people haven't even got that learned, see? But now they're tired of repetition, so they say. They wanna get into something new. Now, when you get into something new and get away from repetitions or repeating, then you are headed for the lake. That's exactly mm. where you're headed for. That's right. Mic drop. Mic drop. That's so right. Now you, you see that? The, yeah. Uh, and I think there's, I don't know if it's this lecture or another one where he said the revelation is progressive, but it don't change. And so, yeah, he says, when you try to get away from repeating and you try to get into something new, uh, in other words, you want to go against what Yahweh says and the way he set it up. Uh, he's the, he's the, Yahweh Elohim's the archetype original pattern of the universe. And you say, oh no, it ain't about that pattern. Uh, it's this way. And it usually is something new that just, uh, well, it goes against what's in the scriptures and, and the divine vision revelation. And so just when you try to get into something new and get away from repeating, repetitions or repeating then you are headed for the lake that's exactly what you're headed for now and that's why it's and 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 well there's people on different levels and that's why uh yeah. and by repeating it over how did how did you receive the holy spirit how they received the holy spirit they received it by the believing of the gospel of yahshua messiah in the name of yahshua messiah that's how they received the holy spirit that's right so, so, and, 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 and so uh, it, the same recipe works for all souls. It just, there ain't no different way different. to receive salvation. Uh, he's the one that says that by the foolishness of preaching, it pleases Yahweh to save them that believe. And he's preaching the gospel of Yahshua Messiah, the good news that there's life after death. Uh, that he did die and fulfill all things and, and die and nail it to the cross and, and took it out of the way and he was buried and he resurrected a quickening life-giving spirit and now he ascended and poured out the Holy Spirit and that can happen to you. So uh, that's good news that there's uh, eternal life is to know that Yahweh is the only true Elohim and Yahshua Messiah thou hast sent and he's the one that, and, and he showed all this beginning at Moses. I mean, when he resurrected he, to his disciples, he said, and beginning at Moses, uh, 
Boy, I can't even remember what it and says. And all the prophets. <laughs> and yeah, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he expounded them in all the scriptures, the thing concerning himself. And now you're going to say, uh, no, it ain't that way. And that's the resurrected spirit, Holy Spirit teaching. Beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded them in all oh, the scriptures, the things concerning himself. And you're going to say you got a better way? Hmm. Hmm. It reminds me about when they were, they had received the fruit from the promised land. And it just hit me the other day that when they had the, the dinner, that wasn't sweets, that wasn't dessert. But when they came to the promised land, they brought back grapes, pomegranates, sweet um, figs, all sweets. And all they had to do was like, well, let's trust in Yahweh. That's the repetition. Well, look at all the 10 plagues that were poured out. You turn to Yahweh, he saved them, he saved them, he saved them. Got to the divided waters of the Red Sea, Yahweh saved them. Got into the wilderness, hey, we're hungry. Yahweh sent them food. Hey, we're thirsty. Mm -hmm. Yahweh sent them water. So, so the repetitions, trust in Yahweh, trust in Yahweh, trust in Yahweh, trust in Yahweh. Then they get to like, hey, like the, the land is over there. We can have it. Caleb saying he's for us and everything. They're ready to stone um, uh, Moses and Aaron. They don't want to listen to Caleb. They're all worried about their kids. They weren't willing to accept the repetition of trust in Yahweh. Hasn't he always been with us? Hasn't he always taken care of us? When Caleb would say, come on, we can take it. Let's go. Yeah, they weren't listening. And they That's died. Right. Yeah. And yeah. he's going he's gonna to expound on this. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. He said, when you try to get in something new, you want to get away from repetition. Hmm. He says, uh, you're headed for the lake. Yeah. That's exactly what you're headed for. And then he's going, he's going to expound on them repetitions now. <laughs> and they didn't yeah. say, oh, you know, it's like, uh, they said, yeah, it's a good land. Yeah, but we can't have it. <laughs> you know, it's a good land. It's a great land. It's got good fruit and everything, but we can't have it. Well, you couldn't get yourself out of Egypt. So why don't we stick with this guy? <laughs> That's right. Okay, that's right. It functions the same way all the time. Now, look, Freddie. See, you're sitting there breathing, aren't you? Now, when you stop breathing, you know what the rest of the story is. Now, when you get tired of breathing on the count of repetition, audience laughs. I'm just trying. See, I try to make things simple and easy for people to understand. So it won't be no necessity of your of you stumbling and blundering around. See, see, you don't even have to think in order to breathe. If you did, then you just might forget and find yourself dead. <laughs> Now, breathing is an involuntary function. Your heartbeat is an involuntary function. Now, there is a voluntary, voluntary function that's left up to you and you don't do too well with them. Want me to tell you something about that? Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, now a voluntary function is something that you have some control over and you can. You can execute or you can do yourself. See, now you'll go and sit down and eat, right? Right. That's a voluntary thing. And then after you eat, there's something else got to take place, you see. And if you don't go and take care of that, audience, <laughs> See, see what I mean? Then you are gonna have to send for the doctor or go to the drugstore and get you something to take. You, you got constipation. Well, that's right. Some people are just lazy. They won't do that. That's necessary. 
Now, that might sound kind of stupid to you. Say, well, I thought that man was going to talk something about God and joining church, uh, getting rid of sin and all like of that. You'd be surprised. See, you'd be surprised. And then somebody will come along and say this. What's he always knocking some of the rest of these churches for? You see, every time we turn around, he's talking about the Roman Catholics or the Protestants or the Orthodox or the Jews or somebody else. He must think he's the only person in the world that's right. I've heard <laughs> all that. I've heard all that. And somebody say, well, why don't he stick to what's in the Bible and go on and preach what's in the Bible and what's in the book? Now, if I stood up here and told you what was in the book, you see, you follow and you wasn't explaining it to you. See, you'd be just as bad off as you was in the first place. Somebody say, oh no, I believe the Bible is right. I believe every word of it, King James version of it. Then if you do, you're stupid because there's some words in there that just simply ought not to be there. In other words, let me say this to you. See, this is intercorrelations, admitted intercorrelations. Now, an intercorrelation is a spurious phrase. And then there is mistranslations. See, now, if you're going to go along and believe everything you read in the Bible and you get hung up on one of these things, you see, well, the average person, because they don't know the purpose and how to fit it together, they get hung up on it, see. And then if you put it to him, then he thinks, say, well, he ain't got no explanation for it. You want me to give you one of them things? Go ahead and give him one, Doc. Exodus 24, 9 and 10. Then went up Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the Elohim of Israel. Then John 1.18, I should have said God of Israel. Then John 1.18 says, no man has seen God at any time. Now, how do you fix that? Do you see? Now, you can't believe both of them without being just downright stupid. You can't believe that they saw the God of Israel and then there's no man has seen him at any time. Now, you just got to believe one thing or the other or else you don't know. And for the most part of the folks don't even know. See? You read over that all the time before you come here, before anybody said anything to you about it, see? And the, and, and the way you did that, you just galloped on. You didn't, you didn't even know that it was any difference in it at all. There's a lot, there's a lot of things you didn't know. For example, the God of Israel is wrong you see, and you didn't know that either. Somebody come along and say, well, I don't believe in God. Oh, what a pity. Then when you found out about it, then it just wasn't as bad as you thought it was. Now say, oh, I believe in Jesus. Well, that's bad too. But you see, you don't know those things. Now, the simplicity of this teaching, see, is the thing that counts. I believe it's the 10th chapter of Romans, and I know what verse it is. And we'd like to get some sense out of it, so it, but one of the verses says, so then faith comes by hearing. Go on up above there and get the subject, the 10th chapter of Romans starting at the 13th verse. For whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahweh shall be delivered. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? 
now how shall they call on him whom they have not believed see and how yes. shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard now listen did you hear anything about yahweh before you come here no no I want to know now, stand up now. I want to see you and most everybody here come from some church or organization. Now you see how important this is? How can you believe on him in whom you have not heard? You see? Well, some somebody say, well, I belong to this, that, and the other church. Well, you never heard nothing about Yahweh. See, if you did, I ask you, stand up before you come here. Then somebody wants to say, well, I'm saved. See, I know I'm right. And this business of just going on your way, you see, that ain't gonna work. Yahshua Messiah said, I am the way. And listen, no man goeth unto the Father but by me. Now that's the only way. That's the only way you can make it. And not only that, now are you listening? Mickey, you listening? He said he's listening. Yahshua Messiah said, did no man know the father but the son? How about that? And to whomsoever the son will reveal him. That's in the book. How shall they believe on him whom they have not heard? Read. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And oh, said our preachers told us all about that. And so many people have come here from one time to the other and said, yes, our preachers preach us the same way. Uh, the thing you all preach is down there. Now you know what that spells. That means you don't know what he's preaching over there. That's right. You don't know what he's preaching. Said, how long you have been over there? Uh, I've been over there for 15 or 20 or 25 or 30 years. All of my people was born uh raised in that church so as to speak all of my ancestors and progenitors was raised in there and if they can die and go to heaven there out of that i can too i'm satisfied of my religion see there now we've heard that and that's what they have told us now i can't get nobody to stand up if if there is I haven't seen them that they were told about Yahweh before they come here. I know David knows something about it, but I'm not talking about that. But I'm just, I'm just calling the shots like this, see, as a general thing. And from you reading around in the Bible and from your teachers teaching you, you don't hear nothing about Yahweh until you come here. See, then said, how are you gonna hear without a preacher? You see, and now here you are down here, see, from some other church, and they never told you nothing about Yahweh. And yet, and still, you think that he was preaching and teaching to you the same thing over there that we're teaching down here, that we're teaching down here. Now that just can't make, that don't make no kind of sense, see. Now there's something else important about that too, which we're gonna get into. All right, read. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Now how is he gonna preach except he be sent? How's he gonna do it? They're all sent, either by Yahweh or by the devil. All right, read. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet. As it is written. That's another thing. 
you never pay no attention to till you come down here. Mm -hmm. Now he's going to preach except he be sent. How he's going to do it. They're all sent either by Yahweh or by the devil. All right, read. As it is written. Excuse me, the only, reason, on the, the only reason that that got me is like, I know that there are um, some notary speak, not, notary, well-known, notable. <laughs> notable, thank you. <laughs> Preachers in the school or teachers in the school that is, oh, so I was sent, I was sent. And I think it's so beautiful that Dr. Kinley said, they all sent either yeah. by Yahweh or by the devil. That's right. right. I know, that's great. So you don't need to be, you don't have to have a stamp of approval so you can look at the bottom of his foot. Oh, Yahweh sent him. Nope, they all sent. How are you going to know the difference? You got to check them out. Thank you. You're welcome. No, thank you. That's right. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Uh, and and you saw where they, you know, the theme was about how that they said, oh, it's not about repetition or, you know, I'm tired of repetition. He said, well, ain't your heart beating? <laughs> is that repetition? Let it stop. Or are you breathing? That's repetition, isn't it? You breathe uh, and it's involuntary. That means that that's, that's Yahweh or the spirit, uh, or that's the creator that's, that's uh, causing you to breathe and giving you life, breath, and all things. And that's involuntary. You don't have no, no control over that. You don't tell yourself to breathe. You don't tell your heart to beat. It's a gift given you by Yahweh. And it's by repetition, isn't it? Because it repeats itself over and over and over. Your heart beats 100,000 times a day. That's a lot of repetition, ain't it? Mm -hmm. You breathe over 16,000 times a day that's a lot of repetition and that's Yahweh doing that see and then uh, so then he goes into that uh, uh, Romans 10th chapter there and then he, he gets well he also shows so I just believe the King James Version and we teach the same thing over here is uh, 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 we hear my preacher teaches the same thing now he said well most of the time when you go come out of some church, they wasn't using Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua, Messiah back then. But we do have some people even on this that did hear Yahweh before they come down here. Elohim and Yahshua. But you know what? They didn't have the doctrine right. They was told to be water baptized, keep the Lord's Supper and pay tithes and offerings. You understand? Do physical things to worship. Uh, so... Uh, and the Bible does not support you in this age doing those physical things uh, to worship him. Because it said the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth. And none of them were doing that. Even the ones using Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua. You understand? So they ain't speaking the same way. Did you hear them talking about uh, dispensation and ages before you come down to the school? No. Yeah, we didn't know that. Did anybody any of them preachers tell you Matthew, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John's not the New Testament? No. No, you know. So there are people that, uh, so, but, so it, you have, you really do find out that when you come down here, you're going to find that, learn something you didn't know before. And you was never taught that. So he said, if somebody says, uh, my preacher teaches like that, he says, well, you don't know what your preacher teaches then. That's true. Because <laughs> they do not teach the same way. as." Uh, and then when he says, it is written, how beautiful are the feet? Uh, <clears throat> oh, he's going to go talk about that next, I think. Uh, and where that is, uh, well, I guess we'll read that part and then we can go and read it in the Bible. But uh, And he, he's right. I wouldn't have known if he says, how it's as it is written, how beautiful are the feet? Well, where is it written at? Well, a lot of times we would never think, okay, well, let's find out where that was written at. Most time you just keep reading, don't you? Uh, that, and all this is in that 10th chapter of Romans. He started about the 13th verse. I mean, the whole chapter is great, but 
but uh but keep reading there and and, uh, and that and we were taught in this school that's what you do is you go back there and, and I'll tell you one example of that that I, I I mean even coming into the school until I saw a transcript or somebody preaching it uh, I, I I would read that first Corinthians 2 and was it nine we'll start at two and eight and come down first Corinthians two and eight this is another as it is written. First Corinthians two and eight. Um, two and eight. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Elohim of glory. See, if they'd have known who he was, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have said crucify him, but they didn't know it was hidden from them. Read on. But as it is written. I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which Yahweh has prepared for them that love him. And you know, I read that out of the Bible. I didn't see the, I didn't see the but as is written part. I didn't, but I mean, I didn't understand that. I just read over that. Uh, and that's what he's saying. But as it is written, well, where is it written at? <laughs> it was right. written back in the prophets there. But he says, mm -hmm. but as it is written, I hadn't seen, and that's why I was up there preaching on the floor, being a young minister in the school. I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man the things which Yahweh hath prepared for them that love him. And I just kept it like that. See, we ain't seen that yet. We ain't heard that yet. But I didn't know the other part of it. Uh, read that next part. But Yahweh has revealed but. that to but Yahweh every but mm -hmm. means a conjunction. That means you had to read the next verse. You just can't stop and say, I had has not seen, neither, neither ear heard, neither has it entered in the heart of man the things which Yahweh had prepared for them that love him. He says, but, and Dr. Kimley said, that was a long but because Isaiah was 700 years before the Savior come in. Mm -hmm. So that's a 700 year long but there. <laughs> but <laughs> Yahweh hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. In other words, it's been revealed now. That's See, through the spirit, through the Holy Spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of Yahweh. So when somebody says, well, I, I don't have to know of that. Well, it says the, the spirit reveals it, and it's the spirit that searcheth all things. Yea, the deep things of Yahweh. <clears throat> So that uh, that's one of them, uh, but as it is written, and it's written back there in Isaiah, I think about 64 and four, something like that. But anyway, uh, just wanted to give an example of that. Uh, uh, and, and those things are, have to be pointed out to you. You would never know, but as it is written, and then try to look up, well, where is it written at? And we would have to take a concordance and, or, uh, you know, find out where it was written at if you wanted to know so just wanted to give that can, example can you read uh verse 11 as well sure that's a good it's it's great that's for sure yes verse 11 for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him even so the things of yahweh knoweth no man but the spirit of yahweh and that's right isn't it? <laughs> what mm -hmm. do you know if it wasn't the spirit in you would you know anything <laughs> no no because you wouldn't be alive you understand it's Yahweh that's causing us to know what we do know and then the thing and that's just even natural uh but when it comes to the things of Yahweh knoweth no man but the spirit of Yahweh. It takes the Holy Spirit to reveal you those things. See? And then he keeps on continuing on. There's a lot of great stuff in this chapter for sure. <laughs> Do you want to read? you want to talk more, Doctor? Uh, Isaiah 64. Uh, if someone feels like uh, reading further, uh, I'm I see 13 is continuing on the same topic, 13 and 14. 
and 12. <laughs> really, the That's whole thing? Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world. You know what the world teaches, but wrong. <laughs> but the spirit which is of Yahweh, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of Yahweh. He gave us this knowledge, understanding freely. All we had to do was come down to school and learn it, right? Right. Says, which things we, well, go ahead, I guess, if you want. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of Yahweh, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. And that's why when you think somebody would receive this, and say it's so simple anybody can see this everybody will see this no uh, when you're carnal minded and them satanic spirits sometimes they blind your mind that's in the bible in second corinthians four and three it says if our gospel be hid it's hid them or lost whom the goddess world had blinded the minds of them that believe not but if they continue on if they would just try to learn you know if they in other words, uh, like he said earlier, if, if you really wanted to know, or you, it's possible for everyone to know. It's just that you have to sit down and uh, more or less have to see that, yeah, you were taught wrong. It wasn't the truth, what you, were, what you had before. And uh, it takes a while, too, to come to all that knowledge. <laughs> it doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> But he says, the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of Yahweh, for they are foolishness unto him. They think, they think going down to class and learning about a pattern and going back to Moses, that's foolishness. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You have to be able to discern whether something's right or not. See, and, and you have to have the Holy Spirit to be able to judge that. And before we come into class, you're judging just on what you're... Uh, whatever you was taught before and you was taught wrong. So there ain't no righteous judgment there. Uh, but that's what people do. They try to judge the school and say, well, um, uh, I like my church better. My pastor, he does, he does a good job there and don't realize you're being deceived. You're he's lying to you. Or she's lying to you. Uh, it's false doctrine. And we're not against people, but we are against the false doctrine. Does anybody else want to go ahead on with that? Or I just want to know if you wanted Isaiah read. Okay. Uh, this is Isaiah 64 and 4. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither has the eye seen, O Yahweh, beside thee, what he has prepared for him that waiteth for him. And see, they were waiting for him to come and he came and died, buried, resurrected, ascended and poured out the Holy Spirit. So that's why now it's the spirit revealing these things that Yahweh has prepared. Do you understand? Uh, so that's what he's going to go into next in the transcript. Uh, uh, um, Okay, read that, please. Uh, back in the transcript. I don't know if it was Romans 10, 13 or something there. You want Romans 10? Well, just, just read, read where we were. 10, 13, 10 and 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahweh shall be delivered. No, it's back there in the, that's where he started at, but back in the transcript. Okay, transcript says, um, can you go down a little more, please? No, no, you're going up too far. No, 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 no. Come down where you have it highlighted. Thank you ever so much. Right there. Mm -hmm. They, they're all sent either by Yahweh or by the devil. All right, read. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet. Okay. As it is written, 
that's another thing you never paid no attention to till you come down here. You never paid no attention to it as it is written. And you read right on. You didn't know where it was written. Didn't know a thing about it. Never even paid no attention to it. Read right on over it, see? And we had to stop you and say it now. For example, now suppose I say, where is that written? Paul says it is written, see? And most of us would have to use a concordance or something other like that to find out where it was written. We didn't know who said it, see? How beautiful are the feet of them? All right, read on. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the glad tidings of peace. All right. All right, read on. And bring glad tidings of good things, but they have not all obeyed the evangel. Now, but now they have not all obeyed the evangel or obeyed what you call the gospel. They haven't obeyed, you see. Now you can stand up here and tell people what thus said Yahweh, and they are not going to obey it, all of them. And somebody go around here and say, well, how do you know that? Well, they didn't obey Yahshua. They didn't obey Yahweh. They didn't obey the Holy Spirit. If they did, they wouldn't be any of them lost. See, read. For Isaiah said, but now, now you see who said it? For Isaiah said, whatever he's going to read there, read. Yahweh, yep. who has believed our report? Yahweh has said, who has believed our report? Now listen here, folks. Now just listen. Out there is Christendom, like this junk you got here, see? You can't believe that. You can't believe Billy Graham to save your life. Question. <laughs> Why not? Because he calls, because he can't prove nothing he says. He don't know himself to prove it. And even went so far as to make this kind of a statement, he said. He believed that there was a God, but he couldn't prove it. Billy Graham, that great evangelist. Is that right, Doc? Is that right? right. Now, if you knew, you see, and he was preaching the right thing, you see, mm. you understand? And he believed what he was preaching and had a knowledge of it to preach to the people. You're gonna believe my report? Cause I'm gonna slap your sassy face time and time again until you get in it, your head, what I'm talking about. I'm not gonna let you go around stupid like that. And if I did, then I would know. See, See how I'm about that. that? How about that? I had him to come to school here and say all kinds of things. I know he wouldn't, he won't mind if I said it. Bishop Short said, when he come here, he said, I'm from Mrs. Missouri. He said, I'm from Missouri. You got to show me. Did you say that, Bishop? Sure did. That's what he said. I said that it was his right too. Missouri yes, is a sir. show me state. Yeah, and we're down at uh, we finished the uh, time, but uh, you ought to just read those places that he said as it is written. Um, one of them is Isaiah 52 and 7, but I you ought to read the fifth verse and come down and then um read 53 and 1, and that's 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 the things he was talking about. Because when it said uh, how, because, uh, uh, well, 53 and ones, who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? And people don't believe the report. You understand? Right. And for, for Billy Graham to say he don't know how to prove God, <laughs> and how are you going to listen to him? You understand? He just run his mouth. So but, but get to 52 and 5. 
Isaiah 52 and 5. Now, therefore, what I what have I here, saith Yahweh, that my people is taken away for naught? They that rule over them make them to howl, saith Yahweh. And my name continually every day is blasphemed. See, his, <laughs> under the law back there, he said, my name continually every day is blasphemed. And it's up to date, isn't it? Mm -hmm. People yes. aren't, aren't using his name and giving praise to Yahshua the Messiah. Do you understand? Right. And his father, Yahweh. Read on. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he that does speak. Behold, it is I. And the how thing beautiful. we read, he says, and as, it, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet. Now, that's what the seventh verse, that's where he said it was in Isaiah 52 and 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publishes peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publishes the salvation, that saith unto Zion, thy Elohim reigneth. Okay, we've run out of time. But, uh, praise Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah. Praise Yahshua. Hallelujah. Great class. It's some powerful stuff. Come back. Yeah, we, like to thank mm -hmm. we like to thank everyone that came out to study with us today. We hold classes Tuesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. 12 midnight to 2 a.m. in Malaysia, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. in England. May we all stand in our hearts and minds for the doxology taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude from the Holy Name Bible. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Yahweh, our Elohim, to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, be long glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let us all say, hallelujah. 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 Dr. Allen, I have an announcement that I like to make um, the flyer for the event coming up December 16th, 17th, and 18th. There are some updates, adjustments being made to that flyer. I sent it out in haste before uh, a group review. So the updates gonna involve the address that correlates to the website address. Um, I was given export PA, then Belmont PA from the hotel and the website has Belmont. Um, the, theme is what they have listed at the hotel Bible history class. So that's going to be um, updated. And we'll have a contact information, Leanne Mook, so that we can make sure we keep track of seating because uh, we think we only have 20 seats left. So that is all being updated. And once that is confirmed, I'll get out there everyone as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Uh, may I ask? Uh, Dennis, um, is that 